Alright people, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification. That way you'll know when I upload the next video and you'll be supporting my channel. Follow me on Twitter. Every time I upload a new video, I'll be tweeting. Ladies and gents, welcome to G-Rex and this is Arcanum of Steamworks and Magic Obscura review. Cotton Mill certified trademark, okay? This is what the channel says in tech, the best 18th century child RPG ever written. Alright. This is from the game 2001. Damn, this is one of the old ones. Not that old, but old enough. So it's gonna be fun. All the sets videos are incredible. He doesn't care what he says in the video. It, you know, I bet he goes through every single line that he writes in detail, knowing how YouTube can be sometimes, you know, strong, because otherwise his channel wouldn't have survived. So I, I bet he makes the video and puts the same amount of effort just rechecking that video, just the same amount of effort that he made by making making the video, I guess. So yeah, let's watch this one. Remember, if you like my reaction, no for nice subscribe. Uh, so I know which type of videos to react to more, I guess. Uh, check out the reaction today. There's a link in the description. Check out the cards, check out the cards in here. Let's watch it. Hey people, Seth here. Today, I'll be covering an older CRPG which still has its own faithful cult following. A game where you can greatly expand on your English lexicon, promote Marxism among the impoverished working class orc, and of course, have cheap carnal relations with sheep. Arcanum of Steamworks and Magic what? Obscura. This episode is brought to you by RPG Codex and Bad Dragon, both great gaming websites thoroughly recommended. Arcanum takes place in the world of Arcanum. In this fantasy setting, the civilized world is undergoing an industrial revolution, which parallels closely to the industrialization that took place in the 18th century, complete with orc sweatshops, child labor, and lung cancer for everyone. What a great time to be alive, provided you're not a working class peon with a limited life expectancy. However, there's a problem. This world has magic, and magic doesn't exactly coexist well with technology. Technology in Arcanum is just a broad term for utilization of the natural sciences to do stuff, while magic relies on the violation of these natural principles. Put them together in a system, and everything fucks up. Toss a magical artifact too close to a steam engine, you'll loosen and displace the gears, make the engine run too fast, or make the fuel chamber overpressurize and explode. So, mixing the two is generally a bad idea. And while a lot of people benefit- <laughs> I like that whole concept, obviously magic means that anything that is not science otherwise it wouldn't be magic would it it's just a new understanding of something only reason it's magic because it doesn't work in the real world that's why it's magic like how does it work we don't know so it's magic i mean we don't know as in doesn't matter what we do we can't know because you know it doesn't make sense in the physical world but from the increase in tech, some are extremely salty about it. Spells and shit don't work near industrial cities. Healing and resurrecting people by waving your hands no longer does anything. You instead have to rely on barbaric practices like medicine and surgery. Maybe they'll even start demanding you to be a licensed professional, whatever that means. Back in <laughs> Uganda, you could freely practice sorcery and trepanning with just an associate's degree in witchcraft. Everything about this changing world comes together over the course of the story, in which you can play a single, fully customized character. There's a huge variety of options for designing your own character, which are determined by race. In no particular order, these are humans, proud, noble, and forward-thinking when it comes to tech. Elves, proud, noble, but regressive Luddites that hate tech. They live in the forests and chew on bamboo. Dwarves, similar to elves, just shorter with fatter cocks. Is this a Tolkien's thing, the elves? Is this a Tolkien's thing? that you know elves are one with the nature and stays in woods and things things like that half elves, that appears everywhere. products of rape half orcs products of rape half ogres products of systemic rape and of course gnomes, the products of polygamy, incestuous breeding, and corporophilia. It is no exaggeration or hyperbole that all evils of the world are endorsed and committed by gnomes. A gnome feels no empathy nor remorse, no common humanity that separates us from simple beasts. The only love a gnome can feel, if you dare describe it so, is that for money. A gnome would sooner sell his own mother for a pouch of silvers than do a single good deed in his entire gaping hole 
goal of an existence. You also select your background and upbringing, which can range from being voluptuously lewd and beautiful to being born as a mentally stunted special needs child. The story goes that you board the first Zeppelin ever made in this world, the IFS Zephyr, on its maiden voyage across the continent, which gets shot down by orcs flying fighter planes, who are later identified as brothers Jihad al-Nuri and Hussam al-Muradi. The orcs aren't very good at flying, so the attack turns into a suicide bombing, or as we refer to it in Arcanum, an isolated incident. Anyway, these orcs commit two isolated incidents, which result in the Zeppelin exploding and killing everyone aboard. Except you. You live. Then, a gnome dying in the wreckage asks you to deliver a ring back to its rightful owner, with your only clue being the manufacturing signature of the company that made it. This sets off a chain of events and an unfolding conspiracy against not only the modernized world, but the entire living world itself. The first time I played this game many years back, I had no idea what I was doing, but it turned out, I knew exactly what I was doing. Arcanum is one of the rare games out there where playing a pure charisma build is not only viable, it's optimal. With every three points of charisma, your character can recruit an additional NPC into the party. By endgame, I did not have a party. I had a fucking army. And because my charisma was so high, I pretty much talked my way out of any ink. <laughs> I love things like that. I think in San Andreas, very Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, if your respect is pretty high, you can recruit about four or five of your, uh, you know, squads or something, whatever that was. I love doing that. You increase the respect maximum and just, you know, roll around with three, four people in the car. Like, you know, who wants to mess with me now? <laughs> it's fucking awesome. So yeah, this is the case with me and I guess, well, I don't know, playing Oblivion or was it Morrowind? I played Elder Scrolls very early when I was a kid, didn't realize what the fuck I was doing. I can't even remember what I did at the time. Counter. So, I got to the end of the game, met the final antagonist, and I was ready to beat him with my squad of goons. Except, that didn't happen. In the end, you and the final antagonist talk it out. He explains his philosophy, that he views life as unnatural, and that the very act of living and existence is in and of itself suffering, that he'd rather eliminate it out of mercy to prevent further suffering from being born into this world. You then make the argument that life and existence does have merit, that his personal experience and confinement have poisoned his worldview and made him jaded. And remarkably, he agrees, but he also states that his mind is so warped with hatred that you can't just leave him alive. So, you offer him an alternative. Voluntary suicide. So this is what, <laughs> this is like one of the Scooby-Doo type of moments, right? Every time you did all this shit and in the end you just talk and I guess, you know, the guy realizes it was my fault to begin with. And he takes it. Arcanum, the game where you can convince the final antagonist to kill himself out of love for the world he hates. There's very few other RPGs with a plot as strong as Arcanum's, and it changes depending on your character. This time around, I played an autistic dwarf. While previously everyone was quite friendly to me as a well-spoken human, most townspeople now tell me that manlets aren't welcome in these parts. Even renting a bed was suddenly more expensive, as the innkeeper remarks that he'll probably have to spend more time cleaning out the lice and dingleberries left by my filthy, unshaven body. A good example of just how intricate Arcanum's dialogue can be is booking a ticket for the railways. It's a three-step process of declaring whether or not you have magical artifacts, practice wizardry, or possess elementals in your company that could dangerously accelerate and derail the steam locomotive. If you're clean of a supernatural, you get to ride first class close to the machinery, while wizards, to put it bluntly, ride the back of a bus for everyone's safety. And if you lie about it, the conductor will find out, and your paid tickets will be null and void. The gameplay itself though, a mixed bag. Combat's not exactly thrilling. They also introduced critical failure as a fun gameplay mechanic. Just in case you were planning to accidentally decapitate yourself with your own elephant gun, you can choose between real-time and turn-based combat. Depending on which of those, you can better exploit. Casting spells in real-time is based on how fast you can click the mouse. Ranged attacks also become insanely fucking fast in real time, but this is more lethal to you than your adversaries. If you meet an enemy archer later in the game, he can kill your entire party before you even see him. There's also enemies out there that damage your- Yeah, turn-based thing is more like a strategy game type of thing, right? You make a move, then the enemy has a time to make a move, you can make your move when your enemy is making a move, but once he's done and he misses or something, it's your time to make a right? That's how things work.
Real time means nobody has any chance. Both of you just spam the shit out of it. War wins wins. Weapons when you hit them, but damage your armor when they hit you. Thanks, Troika. For this reason, the best companion in the game is a stray dog, which you find after saving it from being kicked to death by a gnome. And by saving, I mean gutting the gnome like a fish. The authorities won't even care. They might even thank you for making the streets safer at night. I learned that a dog's teeth can somehow survive biting rocks and crystals, while the highest quality steel gets shattered from smacking windows and furniture. The AI in this game is fantastic. NPCs can't establish causality between events. Amazingly, NPCs will be more alarmed to see you prowling around than hearing a set of dynamite charges detonating their bedroom. Sneaking is completely broken. Even with mastery, you can be spotted miles away. So, if you want to break into someone's house, a safer way to do it is break their windows while they're not looking with a stealthy weapon such as a shotgun and then wait for them to sleep. NPCs <laughs> are very deep sleepers and they don't give a shit how much noise you're making clunking around how the fuck do you break a window go inside everybody's still sleeping in full plate mail, looting all of their belongings. Stealing from them is completely risk-free. You can even use their own gold to finance purchases from their own store. The game has a very interesting color palette of gray and brown, and sometimes green if you're lucky enough to be in a forest. The UI is also gray and brown. It's not ugly by any means. I'm just saying that if Arcanum was a woman, it would be a very plain, dog-faced woman. But you're already married to her, so you learn to accept it. I'm not gonna lie, every time Seth makes a video and I react to it, I get scared that, hmm, what, what is YouTube going to think about it? Because YouTube nowadays doesn't just see images, it sees commentary as well. And move on. It doesn't help that Arcanum soundtrack is quite moody and melancholic. If I could describe it, it would be like the mental orchestra that plays inside a child worker's head as he attempts to carefully dislodge cotton from running machines, hoping and praying that his hand doesn't get amputated while reaching between the spinning gears. So, usually I just turn off the music and switch it with something more soothing from another RPG. Ah, much better. Traveling through the world map is done by plotting waypoints and works exactly Exactly the same as Fallout 1 and 2. Luckily, there's no urgency to meeting your objectives, so you don't have to worry about racing across the map to finish the main quest. You're very free to travel and encounter quests in any order. Arcanum also lets you plot waypoints inside. See, in the map, if you're just gonna go a place to place by a just dot running over, why can't you just select a place and you know a loading screen happens and you're just there, like lots of games nowadays do. Any games that is not completely open but has a you know stage-wise things like you know go map to map like how Dragon Age Inquisition was, right? You just click on something, you just go forward. Something. Even in the Stalker, if you want to go to another region, you go to end it. Do you want to go next level? Yes, and you just teleport there. Why, you know, run the dot through the map? That doesn't make sense of the map as well, which is really handy to help you navigate huge cities and reduce the pain of backtracking. You could also just be a mage and learn how to teleport. There's a lot of schools of magic, and they're not essentially all equal, and that's because the necromancy school exists. At level 1, it lets you cast harm, and harm is the strongest spell in the game, but it will fuck up your index finger real fast. Power comes at a price. More interestingly, you could also get conjure spirit from the same tree. What if I told you? See, I like games like this who has that element to it like if you use a s strong power there is a you know something that could backfire right it's not just something like oh look at that you have more more power than anyone can imagine just spam the shit out of it this is the one thing that i could think that in elder scrolls uh, skyrim right i mean you can become master in destruction you can become master at, you know i guess conju conjuring illusion restoration and all of them at the same time just keep the mana high right even there you can do it pretty easily Right? And just, you know, spam the shit out of everything, these powerful ass spells. Like, what the hell? You can become master at everything. If you go to the school, right? Winterhold school, right? There, there are many ways you can just master it. Someone decided it was a great idea to write a fuck ton of dialogue around a single spell, because that's exactly what they did. Conjure Spirit lets you summon the souls of minor and major plot characters as long as you can find their body, and then you can interrogate them for clues, advice, and information that normally you'd never get. I talk a bunch about magic, what about technology? Well, with technology, you get schematics that you can craft and manufacture, if you've got the scientific aptitude. And that's about it. You can make anything from mall 
Molotovs, Dynamite, Cocaine, Flamethrowers, Tranquilizer Darts, to even Mechanized Arachnids. There's a lot of schematics to purchase and obtain, and the crafting system is a lot of fun. Unfortunately, some of the components are extremely rare and only spawn about 10% of the time at inventor shops, making it very difficult to build an army of steam-powered robots. But if you somehow do figure it out, tell me, because they don't count to your party limit, so they're potentially infinite. Key bindings can't be remapped, and there's a lot of them, so please check the manual to see all the keys. Speaking of a manual, the Arcanum game manual is fantastic, and probably one of the best I've ever read. The whole thing is about 180 pages, explaining you the lore, the setting, and the races of this world, and illustrating the dilemma between magic and technology. It's e Couldn't they find a way to put this PDF uh, in a format inside the game that you have a codex in the game, it would be more immersive way in that sense, like you could learn things in the game. Even got a fucking banana bread recipe in there. At the end, I tried it. It was pretty good. So for once, please read the manual. It's great. My only word of warning, this game can't run on modern systems. So if you install the good old games copy, you'll have to run it using safe mode. Final score. Good out of very. Arcanum. It's a great game. Very dated by modern standards, but the writing, the plot, and the dialogue keep it fresh. Buy it. Play it. It's super cheap on sale, and you'll easily sink several dozen hours into it. And remember, Remember, a good gnome is a dead gnome. Also, I now have another channel. This is a backup channel. Just in case anything goes wrong. Please subscribe, you won't regret it. Long story short, it is the opinion of a merchant's guild that my channel is the target of an anti-Semitic attack by extremists who hate Israel that are taking time to mass flag each video. I know, it's annoying, but let's make the best of it. And as always, more content to come, so stay tuned. A warm thanks to the many members of a merchant's guild, generously he has a second channel? I didn't know that. But did he fall through it or just stop making it from it? I don't know. So yeah, <clears throat> Arcanum, another one of the games, right? The Seth reviews, uh, but it's, it's a good game overall. Why the hell is the older games who looks like this? Has better mechanics and games than lots of the new AAA titles. Right, the, all of these games have certain type of elements you would think that this is really good. Like if you can't just spam the shit out of mechanics, you can't use magic left and right. If it's a destructive magic, you could have some kind of a drawback from that and many things like that. It's always great. Right, people, that was Arcanum of Steamworks and Magic Obscura. Uh, Seth was just going off with his commentary. I don't know if this video is going to get flagged or what. I don't know. We'll see. But yeah. If you like my Rick's and Rufo, subscribe, check out the Rick's and there's a link in the description, check out the cards, check out the link cards, and yeah, I'll see you next time.